Hello. By learning, unlearning and relearning together in the next few minutes, you will be able to clear your conceptual knowledge of pollination, which will help you in securing good grades in your examination. In this video, we will be learning about the types of pollination, advantages and disadvantages of pollination, various agencies that bring about pollination, comparison between self and cross-pollination and finally we will look into the contrivances for cross-pollination. Pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from anther of a flower to the stigma of the same flower or of another flower of the same or different plant of the same species. The process of pollination was discovered by Camerarius in 1694. He described pollination as an essential process for the formation of seeds. Every living organism, including plants, pass their genetic information or material to the next generation by producing offsprings. Flowering plants or angiosperms produce seeds which carry the genetic information of the parent and develop into a new plant. For this to occur, pollination is a basic necessity. Pollination is of two types. Self-pollination or autogamy, cross-pollination or allogamy. Self-pollination can be further subdivided into homogamy, geitnogamy and cleistogamy. Cross-pollination can be studied under two headings, xenogamy and hybridization. We will understand the terms one by one with examples. The transfer of the pollen from the anther of a flower to the stigma of the same flower or another flower borne by the same plant is known as self-pollination. It is the most basic type of pollination as it involves only one parent plant. It is seen in bisexual flowers, that is, flowers which have both male and female parts. Example, P. When both the anthers and the stigma of a bisexual flower mature at the same time known as homogamy, it results in pollination. Gaitinogamy is the transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of another flower produced on the same plant, example cucurbits. Among bisexual flowers, there are certain flowers that remain closed and are known as cleistogamous due to which the pollen grains can only pollinate the stigma of the same flower. Cleistogamy is seen in Comelina bengalensis. Next we come to advantages of self-pollination. It is a sure method of pollination as there are least chances of failure. Self-pollination ultimately results in progenies which are pure lines that is homozygous. It does not depend upon external factors for pollination. It is the most economical method for the plant because there is no necessity for wasting energy behind formation of nectar, large attractive flowers, etc. Least wastage of pollen grains takes place during self-pollination. Next we will come to disadvantages of self-pollination. No variation and therefore there is no chance of forming improved varieties of new species. Undesirable characters cannot be eliminated. 
desirable characters cannot be introduced in the offspring. Same set of genes are inherited generation after generation. In the long run, the progeny becomes weaker and susceptible to diseases. Continuous self-pollination results in less viability of seeds. It does not favor the process of evolution. It results in reduction in genetic diversity because the male and female cells of the same flower share genetic information. Next we'll come to cross-pollination or allogamy. The transfer of pollen from anther of a flower to the stigma of another flower produced on a different plant having dissimilar genetic makeup is known as cross-pollination. You can see cross-pollination in the diagram. This is brought about by external agents like insects, wind, etc. They carry the pollen grains of one flower from one plant and deposit them on the stigma of another flower of a different plant. There are two types of cross-pollination, xenogamy and hybridization. Xenogamy is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther of a flower to the stigma of another flower of a different plant. This type of pollination brings genetically different types of pollen grains to the stigma. The term xenogramy was first suggested by Kerner in 1876. It is found in papaya. The transfer of pollen grains from anther of a flower to the stigma of another flower produced on a different plant belonging to a different species is called hybridization. Example, pollination between two species of cotton. We come to advantages of cross-pollination. Cross-pollination involves genetic recombination and brings about variation. Desired characters can be introduced in the offspring. Undesired characters can be eliminated. Improved varieties or hybrids can be produced. The offsprings formed are strong with desirable characteristics like disease resistance and can withstand climatic variations. Better vigor and vitality are the desirable characteristics of the offspring. Cross-pollination favors the process of evolution. It results in the increase in genetic diversity because the different flowers are sharing and mixing their genetic information to create unique offsprings. Next we move on to disadvantages of cross-pollination. As cross-pollination depends on external carriers for pollination, the failure chances are more. It is not an economical method as it has to bring about modifications of its parts by wasting energy to attract its agents. Wastage of pollen grain takes place. Genetic purity is not maintained in the offspring. Some desirable characters may get eliminated when genetic recombination takes place. Simultaneously, some undesirable characters may get introduced. Next we come to agencies of pollination. Agencies of pollination can be studied under two broad headings abiotic and biotic. The abiotic agents consists of the wind which is known as animophily and the water hydrophily. 
Biotic consists of insects, entomophily, birds, ornithophily, bats, chiroptophily, and finally snails, malacophily. We'll start with anemophily. We'll go through the characteristics of anemophilous flowers. Now pollination or transfer of pollen grain takes place through wind. Mostly, anemophilous plants produce unisexual flower that is either male flower or female flower. Example, maize, sugarcane. The characteristics of these flowers are they are small and inconspicuous. They are not brightly colored. Nectar and fragments are absent in such flowers. The number of male flowers far exceeds the female flowers and are situated at a higher level. Stamens have long filament with versatile and exposed anthers. Versatile means the filament is attached to the back of the anther at one point only so that the latter can swing freely in the air. Versatile condition is clearly shown in the figure. A large quantity of pollen grains is being wasted during transit from one flower to another. Therefore, the pollen grains are produced in large number to compensate wastage. Pollen grains are small, smooth walled, pale in color, light in weight, dry and sometimes provided with wings as in pinus. These characteristics of the pollen grain help it to get dispersed to long distances. In order to trap the pollen grains, the style is long bearing large feathery or hairy stigma, example bamboo, sugarcane. Now moving on to hydrophily, the transfer of pollen grains through the medium of water is hydrophily. The characteristics of these flowers are, they are unisexual, small, inconspicuous. Flowers do not have bright color, nectar or fragrance. Pollen grains are coated with mucilage to protect them from decaying. Stigma is long and sticky to trap the pollen grains. Hydrophily is of two types, hypohydrophily and epihydrophily. The hydrophytes bearing submerged female flowers undergo pollination just below the water surface and this is known as hypohydrophily. The pollen grains are needle-like and lack the outer layer, namely exine. The specific gravity of the pollen grain and water are same. The pollen grains float just below the water surface. When the pollen grains come in contact with the stigma, they coil around it and germinate, as we see in Jostera. Epihydrophily can be explained with the help of Vallisneria. When pollination occurs on the surface of water, it is called epihydrophily. See the diagram carefully. We see that it is a submerged dioecious plant that is male and female flowers are produced on separate plants. The minute male flowers are large in number while the female plant bears solitary flower. At the time of maturity, the male flower get detached and begin to float on the surface of water while in the female flower, the coiled long pedicel undergoes uncoiling and reaches the surface of water. 
the floating male flowers come in contact with the female flower. The anthers burst and the sticky pollen grains adhere to the surface of stigma. Cross pollination takes place. After pollination, the stalk of the female flower becomes spirally coiled and pulls the female flower down into the water. The fruit develops under water. Next, we move on to entomophily. Pollination through the agency of insects is called entomophily and the plants are called entomophilus. The characteristics of such flowers are they are generally large and attractive. The flowers have attractive bright color, pleasant fragrance and nectar. Flowers attract insects by their color, nectar or scent. The pollen grains have sticky, spiny or rough exine. Stigma is sticky so that they can receive the pollen grains. This condition we find in jasmine and rose flowers. Special adaptations of entomophilus flowers. In cases where the flowers are inconspicuous, other parts become colored and attractive. Example, in bougainvillea and euphorbia, the bracts become highly colored. In mucenda, one of the sepals become modified into a large leafy structure. Have you ever wondered why bees are attracted to flowers? Or why do they visit flowers? The nectar present in the flowers are found in special gland called nectary at the base of the flower and the bees that come in search of nectar bring about pollination. Thus, as the insects visit the flower, their body get dusted with pollen grains and when they visit another flower for nectar, they brush against the sticky stigma and bring about cross pollination. Flowers that open at night are insect loving and emit a sweet scent to attract the insects. Example, Nycthanthus jasmine. The mature inflorescence of Amorphophallus emits a stinging smell that attracts a swarm of carrier flies and pollination is effected through them. In ficus, the female flowers lie at the base of the inflorescence which is known as hypanthodium and open earlier than the male flower which lie near the apical opening and open later. The insects enter the chamber of the inflorescence through the apical pore as marked in the figure and help to pollinate the inflorescence by bringing pollen grains from another inflorescence. In salvia, the flower is bisexual and protandrous. The stamens of the flower have long bifurcated connectives. Look at the diagram carefully. You'll notice the anther lobes, the connective, the insect going in in search of nectar. One of the anther lobes is fertile while the other is sterile. The fertile anther lobe is connected to the upper connective and the sterile anther lobe is connected to the lower connective. When the insect enters the corolla in search of food, it pushes the lower sterile lobe due to which the upper fertile anther lobe bends down and strikes the back of the insect. The pollen grains fall on the insect's body. The same insect, when it visits another flower, the pollen grains from its body are received by the stigma. Such a mechanism is known as lever mechanism. Next we move on to ornithophily. 
When pollination takes place through birds, then it is called ornithophily. Such bird pollinated plants are called ornithophilous plants. The characteristics of these flowers are they show large, brightly colored flowers with thick and fleshy floral parts. Corolla is tubular or funnel shaped so that the bee can enter the corolla for nectar without any hindrance. Flowers lack fragrance because birds have poor sense of smell. Flowers produce a large amount of sugary nectar. The pollen grains are sticky as you find in bignonia bombax that is silk cotton. The common pollinating birds are sunbirds, hummingbirds, bulbul, etc. Next, we'll go through chiroptophily. Pollination, which takes place with the help of bats, is called chiroptophily, and such plants are called chiroptophilus plants. Characteristics of the flowers are they are large sized, having long pedicels and are stout so that bats can hold on to the flowers. The flowers open at night and therefore the plants are called nocturnal. Flowers emit rotten odor. Flowers, in order to produce more pollen grains, have large number of stamens. These flowers produce copious nectar. Anthocephalus, Kegelia pinnata are examples of such plants. In Malacophily, this is another type of pollination. It is brought about by snails and slugs. Land plants such as Chrysanthemum, an aquatic plant like Lemna minor, show Malacophily. By the way, if you are getting some value out of this lecture, Please like and share the video so that all of us can learn, unlearn and relearn together. Also please consider subscribing the channel and press the bell icon to get instant notification of all the upcoming videos. Having discussed self-pollination and cross-pollination in detail, let us now make a comparison between self-pollination and cross-pollination. In self-pollination, pollen grains are transferred from the anther to the stigma of the same flower or another flower born on the same plant, which is known as autogamy. In cross-pollination, pollen grains are transferred from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower born on a different plant of the same species. This is also known as allogamy. Self-pollination results in homozygous of springs. They do not show variations. Cross-pollination produces heterozygous of springs which show variations. External agents like insects, wind, etc. are not required for self-pollination. An external agent is needed for cross-pollination. Self-pollination cannot eliminate harmful characters. Cross-pollination can eliminate harmful or undesired characters. Self-pollination does not help in the production of new varieties. Cross-pollination helps in the production of new varieties in plants. Self-pollinated offsprings are less vigorous. Cross-pollinated offsprings are vigorous due to genetic recombination. Due to self-pollination, the offsprings are unable to adapt to the changing environment. There is variation due to cross-pollination and the plants are better adapted to the changing environment. Next, we come to 
contrivances for cross pollination. By cross pollination, better seeds and healthier offsprings are normally produced. Certain structural devices in the flower favor cross pollination. 1. Unisexuality or dye cleaning. Unisexual or diclinous flower, that is, separate male and female flowers, may be born by one and the same plant. Such a plant is said to be monoecious. Example, maize, cucumber. In monoecious plants, there may be self or cross pollination. The male and the female flowers are born by two separate plants, then it is said to be dioecious, as is seen in palm, mulberry, etc. In dioecious plants, cross pollination is a basic necessity. Second is self sterility. In certain flowers, the pollen grains are unable to germinate on its own stigma. Example, tea flower. To bring about cross-pollination, the pollen grains must be from two such plants which differ genetically. Third is hercogamy. In some flowers, there are certain structural barriers between the stamens and the pistil of the same flower. Example, a hoot covering the stigma as in pansy or lever mechanism as we see in salvia. The fourth is heterostyly. Some plants show dimorphic heterostyly and fifth is dichogamy in which we find two types protogyny and protoandry. Coming to heterostyly as shown in the figure it has either long stamen and a short style and the other form is short stamen and a long style. This is seen in oxalis. So there is more chance of cross pollination. In dichogamy, many bisexual flowers, anther and the stigma in them mature at different times. This condition is known as dichogamy. There are two types of dichogamy. One is protogyny and the other is protandry. In protogyny, the gynecium matures earlier than the anthers of the same flower and therefore cross-pollination is the only way out, seen in ficus. Protandry, as shown in the diagram, the anthers mature earlier than the gynecium, in this case too, Cross-pollination becomes indispensable. Example, sunflower. Protandry is more common than protogyny. After pollination, the process of fertilization in plants take place when the male gamete reaches the ovary and egg cell. The seed is then released from the parent plant and enables it to grow into a new plant and continue the reproductive cycle with the use of the pollination method. So today we have learnt about pollination in detail. I have some practice questions for you. Please share your answers in the comment section below. You can pause the video if you like and write down the questions. Thank you so much for your time and participation. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider subscribing the channel and press the bell icon to get instant notification of all the upcoming videos. Also, if you want to discuss any particular topic in biology, please mention that in the comment section below. I'll see you there. Goodbye. All the best.